Hi, I'm Tam and my husband is Dan and we have just purchased some land in the Snowy Mountains in Australia and we are going to build our dream home and uh, move here from Canberra and uh, we'll take you along for the road. Let's go. So we settled this land a few weeks ago. Um, it was a long process. Uh, the settlement took almost 19 months from when we put our deposit down. Um, it is amazing. It's beautiful. It's 14 acres. Um, at the moment it's bare. We do have some nice trees behind me. Another clump of trees over here. And then up in the very, very top of the paddock there's uh, some lovely trees which we have some wedgetail eagles nesting on and uh, we're just going to leave it natural and, and enjoy it. We have a couple of gullies, one on either side of the property that both have running water. Um, on one side uh, we've got pretty bare, it's just dirt. On the other side it's really natural and lots of nice trees and a small little pond that has a turtle in it that we're calling our turtle pond. Um, so that's a beautiful spot that I'm sure I'll show you at some point. Um, but for now what we've done is we have set up a camping area. We're avid campers, we come camping all the time. Not necessarily up in the snowy mountains, it's a little windy sorry. Um, so we've set up a camping area. Uh, you can see our barbecues right here, so we have cooking. We have a small shed. Where is it? Right over there, behind my shoulder. A small little shed for all of our bits and pieces, all of our equipment, um, and you know, a toilet, things like that, because we don't have any buildings out here yet. And then today, what I've done is I've brought over some of our worm farm from our house. And they're under these beautiful leaves in this little raised garden bed. So we're slowly moving a few things out, getting established, getting set up, really loving it. We have some surveyors coming out in a few weeks to um, start talking about our house. I'm going out to look at a, another house tomorrow. Um, one of the houses that we've, we've got as our shortlist um, and talk to a few people and uh, I'll take you along. But for now, we're gonna have some lunch. Okay, hey, for lunch today, backcountry cuisine, Thai chicken curry. It's a freeze dried meal, so all you have to do is put boiling water in, zip it back up, let it sit there 15 minutes, and uh, Bob's your uncle. Picked up a few of these this morning from BCF. Just makes things easier when we're out here and we don't have any services, we don't have a kitchen. We do have our lovely barbecue, which is very, very old and uh, in need of a good clean. Uh, but for now, that's my lunch. Stunning here. Absolutely lovely. This is my lunch. It actually tastes and smells amazing. Way better than I was expecting for a freeze dried meal. So I'm rather impressed right now about country cuisine. We'll love it. Luckily, I bought about four of these, so uh, I'll have plenty for the weekend. Getting a little bit cold. Uh, it is May at the moment. Um, we are in the snowy mountains. Cold as expected. Um, but it's uh, it's a quiet day today. I'm just here on my own. Uh, Dan is at work and our little boy is at uh, preschool. Um, I have a couple of days off because I had COVID a couple of weeks ago and I'm still just recovering. I had to work a lot during that period. Um, job so I worked through most of the COVID from home and now that things are a bit quieter at work I've taken a few days off to recharge the batteries and uh, I thought I'd come out here on my day off just myself and enjoy the time to just sit and ponder and bring out some of my worms and enjoy the quiet because it's not always quiet out here with a four-year-old I'm running around and a husband with a whippersnipper or a chainsaw and all of the things. Okay, I feel like the longer we get into this video, the more layers I put in because it's actually getting really cold. Um, thought I'd do a bit of a walk, show you around a little bit. Um, this area here is our lovely camping area. 
fireplace right in the middle, can't go past it. The shed's over here. Walking up, we've got a really long driveway. It goes all the way down to the bottom, almost right down to those trees down there. So all the way down to the bottom, coming up the driveway, we come up to this beautiful spot right up here. When I arrived here this morning, there was a huge mob of kangaroos sitting right here staring at me. So uh, we have a lot of wildlife around. We know that there's a couple of wombats as well, but the kangaroos are everywhere. So this is where our house is going, right over here. So it's going to be on a bit of an angle, I think. So the front, we're actually going to be facing almost this way. So we've just come up here and the house is going here. So all the alfresco will open on this side, looking out over these amazing mountains. And then the front of the house will be opening up onto this amazing view right here. So one of the things we have been talking about doing is a food forest. And we've seen that around a lot on YouTube and different channels. Um, one of our favorites, the Weedy Garden. Absolutely love the Weedy Garden. Um, and he's very much into the permaculture principles and the, the food forests and really living off the land and just love it. He's fantastic. Go check out his channel. Um, but so we're looking to do the food forest. I'm working on permaculture principles and regenerating the land and using what we've got and putting, you know, putting back into the soil, not taking out. Um, so a lot of this area behind me, <clears throat> all the way through here on the side of our house, is all going to be turned into an amazing food forest and orchard and this area up behind me it's a bit more flat it's a bit more like a meadow it's not really grassy um we've got a lot of these like what is it these um like alpine um flowers and kind of plants I'm not entirely sure what they are I would love to get someone out here who knows so um that's for another day but it's very flat through here it's a bit more rocky it's not so much of the grass um, in this area I would love to do a bit more of a kitchen garden um, do a lot of my fruit and veggies um, a tea garden is something that I've been talking about for years and I love tea I'm not a coffee drinker neither Dan or I are coffee drinkers but we do love tea so I would love to be able to grow things to make tea so I want to create a tea garden so if anyone has any ideas about what I should do there let me know because I would really 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 love to do it so my tea garden will probably go on this side because this is the side of the house that you can come out of the kitchen butler's pantry onto this side of the house so that makes sense to have a tea garden on this side in the springtime and in the summer there's lots of like little meadow flowers all through this area it's really really beautiful so i'm really looking forward to the spring where we can um, really get a feel for what this land is and what it does one of the things we have been doing is some planting. So we have a lot of these native gums and uh, we've been putting those in to really build up this back area a little bit. It's fairly bare. There's not much here. So there's a little gum, gum. We're like little silver dollar gums and whatnot. We have a lot of water. This is our little weir that there's quite a bit of water in. Let's go see what it looks like today. Bit of water down there. It's got a trickle happening. Um, but really, um, we just want to build this area up, make it as natural as possible. Um, be able to kind of have a bit of a windbreak up here too. Um, and just, yeah, there's probably what about 50 or so plants that Daniel's parents were kind enough to plant for us one day. Um, yeah, it's going to look really nice when it's done. One of the other really great things is that every time we come here we see something new. And I've just found something new. So let's go check it out. What is this? It looks like a pine. It looks like a pine tree. Maybe we'll have to have our own little Christmas tree out here. So this is the back of the property here. You see that, that line running along? That's just so that we can mark our fence line. So 
lovely trees up the back. Hope you can see that. One of the um, downsides to this property um, is the fact that in this area, it is covered in what's called African love grass. And it's this spindly kind of stuff. And uh, it's an invasive weed. And our property is about 14 acres of African love grass. So we are, we are doing a bit of research as to how to deal with it. <clears throat> we have been cutting it back where we need to um, and then digging out clumps. But really, it's 14 acres of African love grass. So that's a downside, but every property in the area is pretty similar. They all have it. Um, it was introduced to the area to stop erosion um, and for a few different reasons. Um, I'll have to do a bit more research on it because I don't know a huge amount on it. Um, but it's very, very prevalent in this area. It's everywhere. So we're not the only property with an African love grass issue. Um, but we definitely plan to do something about it. So stay tuned. Another little perk of this property is the blackberries. I have these thorny blackberries. Um, this is directly underneath this massive big tree right up the back of the property and I didn't know this blackberry was here. We do have one over in the gully over that side. Big 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 blackberry that we'll get rid of. Apparently there's another one here. So that's fun. One of the things that's becoming very evident as we do more walks around the property is just how wet it is. We thought, given the look of it, it's very brown at the moment, it's wet. Um, it almost looks like there might be a couple little springs around. I'm not sure if it's springs or if it's just water coming off the hill, um, but I'm sinking into the ground in some spots. It's really, really, really wet. Um, so that's one of the things we'll have to look at the further we get into planting is what plants do and don't like water some of fruit plants really don't like sitting in water so we'll just have to be very aware of that and do some research before we put things into the ground ultimately i would like to live here for a year before we start planting big fruit trees they're expensive so i don't want to kill them um, but it also just helps to know where your water is um, one of the things I've heard is you plant your water before you plant your plants. And that's really just figuring out where your water is, where it sits. If it pours down one day, what's going to happen? Where's the water going to run off? Where is it going to pull? So yeah, I'm, I'm noticing that. There is a lot more water here than I was expecting. So who knows? Maybe our fruit trees will end up in that tea garden after all because it's too wet in the food forest. I thought there was a wombat hole here somewhere, so I'm going to try and find it, but um, I don't know, maybe it's grown over. I saw it once when we were walking through about a year ago, um, and now I can't find it. But I'm sure that there's a couple here, because I've seen their poop, so I know that they're here. Let's go for a wonder. Nope, can't find it. No wombat hole today. I'll find it when I fall in it. I've fallen down a wombat hole before and it was not fun. And I had to hike a really long way back to the car. And uh, then I spent a good couple of hours in the hospital that night with a busted foot. Uh, I don't recommend it. I also don't recommend hiking in thongs uh, between water crossings. That was dumb. But I can't find the uh, wombat hole today. I do know that they're here though. Fun fact, wombats poop, square poop. 
and they tend to poop on rocks and things to mark their territory. So if you see an odd shaped square cube of poop on a rock, that's a wombat. For anyone who doesn't live in Australia, that's a wombat. I'm definitely seeing lots of wombat tracks and lots of animal tracks because they make a very distinct pattern in the grass and it really cuts it down and you can see exactly where they're walking. So I know that they're around. I'm currently in the very top corner of the property. The pegs right over there somewhere. And uh, it's a beautiful view from up here. We have the dam, which unfortunately isn't ours. It's right on the other side of the property. The dam is right there. And this view is just stunning. Looking out over the mountains, I believe this mountain range is called the Clear View Range. Um, and there's Mount Clear over there. Um, I think that's what it is. I, that is what I've been told. So I'll have to look that up on a map and uh, see if that's correct. This is a very distinct animal trail down to the water. It is very, very muddy. Lots of paw prints. Down here, we have a little gully. I might go for a walk down and check out our turtle pond. And this is our amazing turtle pond. Goes all the way down. There's a bit of a stormwater drain right at the end. That's the end of the cul-de-sac. And this is such a beautiful spot. I can imagine the summertime there'd be a lot of snakes down here though, so we really have to be careful. I don't see the turtle today. But I know he's there because I've seen him. Maybe another day. So here I am coming back into camp, right here. And we'll see what else I can get into for this afternoon. So I've just come back to camp from the turtle pond, just right down there. And that was a 360 of the whole block. It's, uh, it's a bit of a way. I think it took me almost an hour to get all the way around and stopping and looking for things and checking out any of the new plants that I can find. Uh, this is my first time out here on my own. So uh, I'm glad that I didn't break an ankle because that could happen. I'm a bit accident prone. <laughs> um, this is a fairly raw vlog. I wasn't planning on recording anything today, um, but seeing as how I was just out here on my own enjoying the day I thought why not um, I know there's a few people that we know who are keen on what we're doing like keen to know what we're doing and um, have shown an interest so hopefully everyone watching at home will be able to experience it along with us but for now I'm gonna sit and I'm gonna enjoy the hour that I've got left I think before I have to drive home in about an hour, hour and a half. And uh, tonight we're going to the movies, just me and Dan. So that'll be a nice change for us. And we're gonna go and see Top Gun and have a really nice night. And uh, we'll catch you in the next one. Bye.